Hey, what's up my peoples? I'm back with another action figure video review and today we're going to be taking a look at the Overwatch Figma Good Smile Company Widowmaker. So here we are and there she is and first and foremost as always we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So we'll get her moved off to the side and here it is. You got a nice uh, purple background in the window and um, you do get Figma right there. She is figure number 387, 10th, uh, 10th anniversary, um, Figma, uh, apparently since 2008, so, um, last year was their 10 year anniversary, so that's, that's nice, that's, that's really cool, uh, they, they've honestly come a long way, like, uh, I don't own any Figmas other than Tracer and Widowmaker, but I could tell they, they've come a long way, because, they have some pretty dang good figures, so. But um, up here you have warning, choking hazard, please don't eat anything in the in this box, that could be very bad for you. And then Max Factory, Good Smile Company, yada yada yada. On the top you got Widowmaker, um, you know, finger shooting you. Sure. <laughs> And then you get the same logos, Widowmaker, Overwatch, yada yada yada. On this side, you got her aiming down, sniping her prey. Uh, Figma, um, action figure series, Widowmaker, yada yada yada. On this side, you got another uh, picture of our beautiful blue French lady right there. And the same stuff as on the other side. On the back of the box, you got your... Uh, promo pics and more warnings that probably says um, if you don't uh, there's a joke somewhere I'm trying to think of it you don't want to end up in her crosshairs because she may get play of the game if you do <laughs> um, oh and it probably and down here probably says something like if uh, warning, if you're terrible at sharpshooters, do not play as this character, but enjoy the figure. Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's me in, in that regard. <laughs> uh, I'm not good at snipers, but anyway. Yeah, nice pictures. Ni uh, shows off some of her poses and accessories you could get her into. And then you have her on the bottom, same as the top. So, that's basically it for packaging and Jesus that was loud mom really needs to get a rug in here but um anyway here we have Widowmaker and she is oh my god I'm so glad I didn't pass up on her because this is such a really 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 cool figure um let me get her into a uh just a regular vanilla pose stand uh kind of pose words <laughs> and we will get right into it okay Whew. Whew. I thought I uh, <clears throat> thought I was gonna run out of time <laughs> and my camera was gonna fall asleep on me but um anyway um so here she is in a uh, just just a vanilla pose nothing special just you know but uh, I did want to get her into this pose so that you know you could just see how 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 all the detail looks and uh, very nice paintwork on her. If, let's see if we can get a bit of a zoom in. So yeah, very nice paintwork. Uh, I love the metallic like. Uh, purple kind of color and the blues and uh, she does have a tattoo on her right forearm and there's the back um, nice clean paintwork on her widow logo right there nice silver and black and kind of a grayish color for her high-heeled boots those are some spiky boots and uh, you do want to be careful about interchanging the hands because they they do have some spikiness towards the uh, the uh, knuckles, so do be careful of um, 
intercha interchanging the hands so that you don't hurt yourself. But, um, yeah, you got her shoulder pad right there. Her little widow logo. You even got some, like, metallic pink, I think it is, in here with some silver. So that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah. So, for comparison, now we gotta compare her with we have to compare her with uh, this figure first, because here she is with Figma Tracer. So there you have that. As you can see, Tracer is in fact shorter, which is appropriate, and my phone won't shut up. Gosh dang it, you jack. <laughs> but um, there you have that. And in case you haven't seen my Deadshot review, here she is with Will Smith. He is... Shut up, stupid phone! Jesus! <laughs> Sorry. Dang, this phone does not shut up. Alright, turned it down to vibrate. So, anyway. Um, here she is with Will Smith. And here they are with a droid cup. Power of the Force Destroyer droid. See, he's even taller than that. I mean, what? What? Anyway. Um, yeah, here she is with a droidica. Or a destroyer droid, however you want to call them. Definitely a bit bigger than her because these guys are big. And here she is with my custom Bandai R4P17 just to show her with another lady, because she is a lady. This is a little lady, not a little guy, a little lady. Just saying. So there you have that. And for some villain comparisons, here she is with SH Figures Harley Quinn. And Mafex Joker. And let's throw in a B1 Battle Droid. Black Series, of course, because if you haven't seen my Deadshot review, I kind of made a statement that I got rid of my Figure Hearts Battle Droids. So, there you go. There you have Joker, Harley. And then we will take this Battle Droid away. I don't! Oh, dang it. It's okay. It's all right. We're going to power through. We're going to power through. And here she is with General Grievous, who I did not stand up straight because I don't care. Yeah, there she is with Grievous. Dang it. People keep knocking her over. It's not good. It's not good. You guys are lucky that I go through the pain. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, eh, just because she's here. Here she is with Padme. She is shorter than Padme. Or taller than Padme, excuse me. Padme is shorter than her. And Anakin, Obi-Wan... Both SHF, Captain Rex, and R2-D2, who you can't see because, oh, well, you can see his projector. There you go. There she is with R2 and the others. So, yeah. She's a pretty good size. Um, so, if you want to, like... For some reason, use her in your Star Wars universe. You can do that if you want to use her as an alien um, for your Marvel or DC shows. You can do that. Um, you know, what? screw it. Here she is with bats. There you go. For those who are interested. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Overall, uh, very cool figure. Um, 
you know, she's, um, and she's very poseable too, so we'll get into articulation real quick. So let's start off at the ponytail. That is a very long ponytail, oh my god. <laughs> but um, it can hinge up that far and down until it hits her arm or her back or whatever. But um, if you get her to look down, obviously you could look even more. Um, yeah, and then it does swivel at both the uh, connection where it goes into the head and then it also swivels. Let me see if I can turn it because I don't want to break it. Yeah, you, you can get it to turn. You can manipulate it to go this way, you know, in and out, but obviously you want it to go more up and down for those dynamic poses like whipping her hair in the wind, so. And it is a bit cartoony, but it the game is pretty cartoony, so, you know. Um, and <laughs> that's one of my gripes, we'll get into that. But um, yeah, and the head can look up about that far, which is decent. It's not the worst, but it's not the greatest. And then you can get her to look down about that far. And then you do get some pretty decent head pivot along with the swivel. Now the shoulders are interesting because they have a pull out joint. As you see, you can shift the shoulders in and out so you can get more of a butterfly motion, which I do like a lot and I do use that point of articulation pretty often. Uh, you can get her arms to move up that far and I think this arm because it has the shoulder pad, the shoulder pad on a, the shoulder pad is on a hinge, but I think even with the shoulder pad being on a hinge, it's a bit limiting. Uh, yeah, it is a little limiting. But you can still get her her left arm up that far. So she's a bit asymmetrical with her design too. Like you know, you got a forearm gauntlet here, nothing over there, no shoulder pad, shoulder pad, you know. But um, uh, you can also get her to shrug if you need to. So, but um, and you know the. This finger is exposed, whereas there are no fingers exposed on this one. So, but yeah, you can get them um, out as far as they can go and inward as far as they can go, and then you do get full rotation as long as it doesn't get caught by the ponytail. Um, so, yeah, there you have that. And then you do get a bit of a bicep swivel built around the shoulder, which I don't mind at all. You do have a single hinged uh, elbow, which does get up more than a 90, so it's passable. And then you do get a uh, your standard import type ball hinge, so you can have them hinge up and down, or you can manipulate it around to go in and out, depending on what you need out of the joint. So there you have that. Now, her uh, torso, she only has one torso joint, and that's above or below her uh, her her chest, let's just say. And you do, uh, I think it's on the ball peg. Is it on the ball peg? Or is it a double ball peg? It might be on a, on a double ball peg. So you do get some nice range of movements out of it, you do, you do get not far forward at all. You do, you do get very far back, but it does get a bit gappy, so do be careful when you're posing her for pictures. Um, you can kind of hide it, but it's still slightly visible. And then from the back, it's visible as well. So even even like when you try to hide it, it's still visible. So yeah, but you do get good tilt, good tilt, good swivel. I mean that's about about as far as you need, so I want I would not force it past there. Now the hips, this is interesting because 
I've uh, I've dealt with drop down hip joints, but this is different for me, because um, the hips drop down together from the I'm thinking the pelvis. Um, like there's a little sliding joint in there, so, but she you can get her to kick forward, eh, about that far, which is good for if you need her to do them high kicks, then back about that far, the butt, the butt sculpt kind of gets in the way. Outward, she cannot do the full splits, which is a bit of a shame because her character, her backstory was, you know, she, she like does some ballerina type dance uh, moves for one of her emotes, so. But still, you get her into plenty of poses, even with her hips not going that far outward, or, you know, not much further forward than that. So yeah, and then you do get some swivel built around the thigh, I think? Yeah, you can see it in there. So yeah. And then you just collapse that up when you're not using it. Uh, Single hinged knee on a ball hinge, so you can get that far forward, which, I mean, she doesn't kick her, her own butt, obviously, but still, great range. And then it does uh, kind of swivel, kind of moves up there, and then you get a shin swivel if you need it. And then no toe joint, but you do get good ankle movement up, down, and then you do get your rocker. It's not the best rocker, but you do get a good amount of ankle pivot if you manipulate the joints, which is kind of hard to do because her boots are sculpted in a way but um yeah, decent ankle pivot but um, yeah, these little these little uh, these little areas kind of do get in the way. But I mean, you're still gonna be able to get her into some some neat widowmaker like poses, and I will put her into one right now. Actually, before we get into that, uh, I almost forgot that we didn't go over accessories. So um. So, we'll just get into that real quick. She does have two face sculpts, and we'll get into and we'll get a uh, up close look at the current one. Okay, so there. Um, so the uh, face on here is like the the neutral kind of face, and it is beautifully done. Like I have zero complaints about how the face looks. I mean, this this is Widowmaker. And just so you know, if you watch Anthony's Customs, don't don't watch that channel if you hate, uh, if you just hate uh, uh, just under the sun nitpicking because he nitpicks the absolute crap out of everything. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm surprised that he has as big of an audience as he does have because, like, I mean, he's a he does a good job at reviewing. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's a horrible reviewer, but in terms of the nitpickiest reviewers, oh, he takes the cake. <laughs> I thought Optibotamus was nitpicky, but um, anyway, um, but yeah, like, oh, it doesn't look like Widowmaker. Um, who is this then? If this isn't Widowmaker, who is this? Same for Tracer. This doesn't, yeah, this totally doesn't look like Tracer. I mean, look, look, look. Yeah, it doesn't totally look like Tracer or Widowmaker. <laughs> Come on. But, um, anyway. That crap aside, um, she does have this beautiful face sculpt, which, and this is one of my biggest issues, her mask that's collapsed onto her forehead. It's a nice piece. It's nicely sculpted with the red uh, with red paint and 
the colored plastic that it is, if I don't drop it. And as you can see, there's like some tiny sculpted details just in the mask. And it's nice, it's just, it loves to fall out and it's so annoying. Like I've even put super glue on these tabs and if I would stop dropping it. See, I put super glue on those tabs and it's like it didn't work. Like it worked, but now it doesn't work. So that is a huge bummer. But we do get this alternate uh, mask where it's kind of collapsed over her face and you could just take this and slide this onto her forehead, just like that. And you do kind of have to position it where it's even, especially if you have crazy, no, well, I don't have crazy OCD, but my OCD is still pretty bad. So, Yeah, this is about uh, as good as I can get it, but yeah, you get it. Uh, you can use this and uh, put it over her eyes like that, so she can use her her ultimate. And then you just simply slide this off, and then we do get two alternate faces. So we do get this one, which we already talked about. Very nice. Then you could pop this off. And you can pop on, and the neutral face is a little too easy to pop on and off as well. So I did put some super glue in that, and that seems to have held up. And then you could take this face, which is her kind of winking or aiming. So you do have that. Oof, and if you heard one of my limbs pop, that, that was my neck because it was feeling very tense. So, but yeah, very nice uh, paint and sculpt. So we'll just put on her, her normal face and the uh, collapsed mask right there. And then we do get an interchangeable forearm piece. And um, this is really cool. Um, basically what you do is you, um, let me zoom out a little so I can show you without getting out of frame. So you do want to rotate and pull. And then you do have this alternate forearm piece with a grappling hook attachment. And I have heard Grimes people saying, oh, I wish it was on a wire. Oh, I wish it was just a static piece. I'm glad it's neither because, you know, you can get her to hang upside down and I usually keep the, uh, the uh, string wrapped around this clear piece and I keep this clear piece in the forearm when I'm not using it so that it doesn't close up. And um, yeah, so you just slide this on like so. And there you go, there you have her with a grappling hook launched forearm. And uh, the hook is uh, nice, it's, um, I think it's like a uh, either a white or a black plastic with um, kind of a black or a gunmetal gray paint and then the white and some silver paint. Or it could be silver plastic, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But it's very nice, and the string is nice and sturdy, and it has held the weight of the figure before, because I did put her in a box real quick. Alright, so I have gotten her into this pose right here, and uh, I've left it for like quite a few minutes and everything, and the string holds up, and the plastic for the hook is sturdy enough where it holds her, so yeah. Two box tosses and one video, you are welcome. <laughs> but yeah, and it does have a wrist peg already installed, so um, I'm guessing this is the spare wrist peg that they included because there was no uh, spare wrist peg, and Tracer came with one, which I gave to my Mafex Homecoming Spidey because 
uh, one of my friends um, accidentally broke the one of the wrist pegs on that, but um, yeah, I'm guessing that this um, you can use as a an an extra wrist peg in case one of the ones that you have breaks. But um, yeah, so that you do have the uh, the grappling hook forearm, and you do have the same kind of paint and sculpt as the original forearm, which we will port back on right now. There we go. There's the click. Oh, and because it does port on, you can rotate the forearm if you want these spikes going out to the side or going down, whichever you prefer. So I prefer them out to the side. At least I think that's accurate. I, I'm not entirely sure. But, um... Yeah, you do get that, and then we do get a slew of interchangeable hands. So we do have the usual Figma tree of hands, and I don't have two of them on because I, um, I had them on the figure in the opening footage. So there you go, you get, um, you get a trigger finger hand right here and then this is I think this hand is to hold the weight of the of her uh, weapon and then you do get some relaxed or splayed out posing hands and then you do get a couple of uh, gripping hands and then you get a uh, you know like hey or I'm gonna shoot you kind of hand I don't know and then I don't know what this hand is it may be like a um relaxed trigger finger hand like you know when you when you hold a gun and you take your finger off the trigger kind of hand maybe that's what it is i'm not entirely sure but uh we do have um her widow's kiss rifle and it's very nice nicely painted you got some silver black you got some red for the scope on both sides so yeah and you can swap out the parts like you could take the scope off and then you could take this piece off and you can give her the uh, machine gun look by just replacing that and then putting the collapsed scope on top and I don't have this on all the way because there have been plenty of times where I would try to take this piece off and it would launch and I'm like, oh crap, did I, lo did I lose it? Please don't tell me I lost it. So, yeah. But there you go. There you have the basic um, look for her widow's kiss. The submachine gun look. And then let's just turn it back into the sniper configuration. And then I don't know what this is called. So, and I try to look it up. Uh, real uh, quickly, but I don't see the name on here. So, um, so if you can tell me what her uh, toxic bomb like thing is, I would really appreciate it. But again, nice paint, nice sculpt. Don't know why it has only six legs instead of eight, but hey, you know, it is what it is. But, um, yeah, overall, very nice figure. Um, She's about six inches tall in height, and yeah, I highly recommend her if you're a Figma fan, if you're an Overwatch fan, or if you want to, um, you know, I, I just recommend this, so I'll see you in the next video.